uncensored talk about your team's sports 1280, New Orleans. Welcome back, Dunk and Holder. We'll be getting to Catherine Sayre here in a minute. Don't forget, Dave Baker will be joining us in about 13 minutes from the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We're talking... Tom Benson and his legacy and and Clyde again we were talking in the break and it's it's complicated within the city as yeah. far as uh, what some feel and the two callers we had of course we did not sync them up no had no idea <laughs> that was completely random we did not nothing and yeah so it's certainly something that We've spoken about it. I know plenty of people have reached out to me and uh, said great things. I've even had someone drop an email um, as far as wanting us to take down the comment section off my column because people were going in there and attacking Tom Benson, even though my column had nothing to do with attacking Tom Benson. It's 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 kind of wild, honestly. Yeah, it's it's. You know, I like to think that over the course of all of our lifetimes and kind of a more of a broad, uh, broad sweeping brush motion that, you know, if we are able to go back and look over the course of our lives and being able to like really sit down and think about the moves that we've made, the things that we've said, the things that we've done there are a lot of things on so many different levels that um, aren't pretty, they aren't rosy, they aren't great, but there are a lot of other really good parts of it that you can easily harken back to that kind of lead you to the place that you know you are now currently. And I think the poignant thing, specifically from your story and Jeff's story, that was lockstep with each other and was the same was the fact that after Tom Benson's first wife passed away and then meeting Gail and then marrying Gail. Well, Gail was after the second wife. Yeah, after the second wife. Yes. Sorry, yeah, after the second wife. Yes. Um, how that completely changed him and softened him. Like, both you guys had in your stories, which I found the most poignant part in both, was the fact that she was able to do something to him to soften his harder exterior than most, which I found very interesting. All right, let's hit uh, our guest line. Join us right here on the show. All right, Will, we, we lost her. <laughs> Catherine, if you're listening, give us a call back. <laughs> We'd she, love to hear from you. Yeah, I, mean, I think she's having phone issues. So, uh, and, yeah. if she, and especially if she's in our NOLA.com office, uh, NOLA offices, then it's a spotty, spotty place for cell phones. I know, so maybe we'll just do pigeon carrier. Yeah, well. I know. If we would have been in the old studio, which we were a day ago. Yeah, we could have just had her in. She would have sat across from me and it turned on the uh, the omnidirectional. Uh, all right. Join us right here on the show. Well, let's blame Canal Place, Catherine Sayer from NOLA.com and the Times Pick Hey, Catherine, appreciate Hi. you uh, jumping on the show. And um, as far as the ownership's concerned, of course, that was a uh, everyone's primary – well, not everyone's, but a primary question of many people in the public. Just kind of lay out – where the ownership stands right now and what may potentially happen in the future. Sure. So, you know, there are some things we know and there are some things we don't know at this point. Um, so the fans will remember three years ago, uh, Tom Benson made that surprise announcement that he was uh, wanting to leave the Saints and the Pelicans to Gale rather than to his heirs, uh, Renee Benson and Rita and Ryan LeBlanc, which kind of, everyone assumed was the plan up to that point. Um, and that, of course, set off several years of litigate, litigation between both sides. So what we know today is that you know, the Saints say Tom Benson, in fact, ensured that Gale is now owner and in control of the Saints and Pelicans, and that you know the NFL and the NBA have, in fact, approved Gale as the official representative of the team, and you know, that's how things Stand. And there are still some things that we don't know. Um, you know, exactly what structure Gail is inheriting the team in. You know, is this some sort of a trust? Um, was she gifted 
at financial interest in the team for Tom Benson died. Because when you get to a fortune that's valued at an estimated like three billion dollars, you know things get complicated. And Catherine, I know we've we've seen a couple of times through this uh, this battle where we've seen settlements and it hasn't gone to court, and do, uh, we don't know the exact ramifications of the settlements. But uh, is there any indication that you've seen that? this thing can become unsettled again and that the three R's may contest this going forward. Yeah, well, you, you hit on an, on an important point there. Um, you know, before these confidential settlements, you know, we know that 95% of the financial interest in the Pelicans and 60% of the financial interest in the state is actually in trust funds benefiting Renee, Rita, and Ryan. Now, it didn't give them any control over the teams, um, but it did give them a huge financial stake. And so the dispute over that interest was settled out of court. So we don't know. We don't know to what, what happened to those shares, right? And to the extent that maybe this becomes unsettled, well, we'll have to see. Um, you know, it's my understanding that uh, Tom Benson's estate, there will be some sort of a will filed publicly in court. Um, to what extent that will will lay out a lot of detail, it's un- unclear. I'm guessing it won't have a lot of detail, but that will could be challenged um, by Renee Benson and Reed and Ryan LeBlanc. Catherine Sayre, NOLA.com, The Times Picking, joining us right here on Duncan Holder. She has been covering the ownership battle uh, for years now and uh, been all over this. Catherine, as uh, as far it's hard it's hard for me to I guess ask you to kind of prognosticate, but uh, look, the Saints are and the Pelicans have come out strongly and say, look, Gail's going to be the owner. Uh, she's been attending the owners' meetings for the past few years. Uh, once, uh, and you know, this was after Rita was gone. Uh, can you envision a situation where this thing changes? I, I know it's a hard, hard question to ask, but I'm I'm, I'm going to throw it out there. Um, you know, I just think back to January of 2015 when Tom Benson made that announcement. He was pretty clear in what his wishes were. He has a lot of lawyers um, working for him. He had a lot of lawyers working for him, and so I'm sure that they did their best to set up an arrangement um, that actually being in full control of the team. Um, go back to where did the financial interest in the team stand? I think that's the biggest question. And it's also important to remember the public almost has a stake in this, not just as being fans of the teams, but we've invested through public incentives in these teams. Our public investment has boosted these, the value of these financial stakes. So I'm not sure I answered your question directly, but, um, you know, I think financially benefit from these teams is still a big yeah Catherine I don't know if there's a direct answer anyway I just uh, but I think it was important for you to kind of spell out those points and just so people understand and uh, what's kind of floating out there Catherine Sarah Noah.com and the Times picking hey Catherine appreciate the time uh, as always and uh, yep I know uh, as things progress or uh, settle down or whatever I know you'll be all over it thanks Catherine appreciate it okay Thank you. All right, that's Catherine Sayre of NOLA.com and the Times Picayune. All right, let's take one final break on the show because I'd like to give Dave Baker a good amount of time. Last segment, uh, he is one to always tell a great story or two or ten. Uh, he's he's one of the good guys in football, and it's no wonder that Tom Benson felt uh, a want to, to donate and donate tens of millions of dollars to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, so I figured – why not have David Baker of the Pro Football Hall of Fame to come on and join us? So uh, we will talk with him coming up next. And just a quick reminder once again, the Troubadour Hotel tonight, the Monkey Bar, Rooftop Bar, 1111 Gravier Street. Duncan Holder will be there. Lots of people from our iHeart stations uh, throughout the building will be there as well. We're going to be eating crawfish from 5 until they run out. That's tonight. $25 gets you 3 pounds of crawfish, 2 local draft beers. And you can reserve a cabana for $500 if you mention Duncan Holder. If you don't, it's a lot more expensive. So come join us tonight. should be a great time. 
and Dave Baker coming up next here. Sports1280, NOAA.com, the iHeartRadio app. Duncan Holder. It's all about-